Hello, uh, this is a video clip related to Lab 5, which is about uh, determining the behavior of some of the basic gates. Uh, one of them is the end gate, the, or, the, other, the other ones are the OR gate, the exclusive OR gate, and un, an unknown gate that you have to analyze uh, for determining what uh, gate it is. Um, so, uh, as you see here on the Barrett board, I already uh, set the, the three chips, the 7408, which is the end chip, uh, the 7432, the OR chip, and the 7486, which is the exclusive OR chip, and the unknown chip, which is the fourth one. I already connected them all to power and ground. As you see, the pin, they go from pin 1, 2, 3, right, counterclockwise, and then in this case there are 14 uh, pins, so it's 8, 9, 10, all the way to 14. And the top left 14, that's VCC, which is 5 volts. They're, in this case, these chips are TTL. They require 5 volts to uh, properly function. And pin number 7, that's the ground. And as you see, all of the grounds are connected and all the powers are connected because we have a tendency to forget to power up the chips for the gates to work properly. And the second thing is... In this case, the unknown chip, I'm not going to tell you which one it is. However, I will tell you only for one reason, is that when you look at the uh, chip layout here, and, the, uh, and, the, and you see that, for example, for the 7408 or the end gates, the end gate chip, pin 1 and pin 2 are the inputs, and pin 3 is the output. Same thing for... Uh, f 4 and 5 are the inputs, and 6 is the output, and so on, right? So, obviously, we don't want the students to destroy their chips by injecting a current into the output of a device or something. So, I'm selecting the 7400 as the unknown chip. But, theoretically, you're not supposed to know what chip it is. Or, if you want to make it more interesting, you get one of your friends to take the four chips the 7408, 7432, 7486, 7400, mix them up and choose one and cover the top and for you to, to, to guess through measurements which one it is. So in this case, as far as the measurements are concerned, obviously you're going to have a table where the inputs are going to go through the AS four possible combinations because there are two inputs, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Just remember that 0 means 0 volt and 1 means 5 volt. Or we say that 0 is the low and 1 or 5 volt are the high, right? So in this case, we have two possibilities for, for uh, f viewing the, the status of the output. One is we can connect an LED and a resistor in series with it to limit the current and to protect the LED. In this configuration here, as you see here, since I want a high to turn on the LED, obviously the, the, the cathode being connected through the resistor to ground, it doesn't mean that the cathode potential is zero uh, because there is a voltage drop across the 220 ohms since there is a current flow, right, ohms law. So, but as long as the anode potential is higher than the cathode potential, then the LED will turn on because the current will flow, right, as you have seen in the diode experiment. So in this configuration, a high will turn on the LED, but a zero, because zero is here and definitely cannot be higher, lower than zero on the cathode, right, because the, uh, this, this pin is connected to ground. Therefore, zero volt across it cannot turn on the LED. So zero, the LED will be off, and a high or five volts or a one, the LED will be on. This is one way to check the, uh, the, the, the status of the output. And so in this case, as I said, you have a table with 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And, and as you see here, I have prepared these two wires, and I'm specifically looking at the exclusive OR, right? The two wires are connected to pin 1 and 2. And the other 
the, and the other end are connected to either VCC or ground. And so one student will take the wires, connect them to zero to ground and ground, that's zero, zero, then connect them to ground and uh, five volts, the other one five volts, one is zero, the other one five volts, and so on, until you go through all the combinations. You look at the status of the output, you transcribe it in the table, and then you verify, does your table verify the, the way that end gate should operate, right? And that's what you can also try to, to make sure you make a correspondence between a zero and a zero volt and a low, which we call a low, and a one, which is five volt or a high. So just to see here, for example, this is the exclusive OR gate. And as far as the exclusive OR gate is concerned, the way you should remember it, or let's say the end gate, you should remember it by saying that only one one input will lead to a one output. Every other combination will give a zero at the output. The OR gate, only zero zero gives you a zero at the output. Every other combination gives you a one. So, and the reason you should uh, remember it this way, because in applications, when you want a one one to be the only condition for a one at the output, you think end gate. If you want zero zero to be the only condition for a zero output, you think or gate. The exclusive or, the way you should remember it instead of memorizing a table, is that when the inputs are equal, like the case zero zero or one one, the output is zero. And when they are different, that means if one is zero, the other one is one, then the output is one. And most likely this is what happened because as you see here, I have one input that is a, a low and the other input is a high. If I put both of them as low, and as you see, the LED turns off. If I put both of them as high, But the LED is off again because they're equal, right? And when they're different, then they are. Then they're going to be. They're going to be. Uh, uh, they're going to be a, a one at the output. So, like in this case, they're different, right? However, one thing that you should consider: look at this, a wire that is off the breadboard, and yet the output is high. Because when this wire is uh, is off the breadboard, it's considered as a floating high, meaning that there is some disturbance where the, the, the chip thinks that it is connected to a high voltage, right? And it's as if so one is connected to ground, the other one is not even connected to high and yet to leads to high. This tells you that in the future, you have to be careful about chips and when the inputs are not connected to anything. Maybe you decided that those inputs are uh, irrelevant to the application, right? If that input has no bearing on the output, then that's fine. It's all right. You could leave it dis disconnected, not connected to anything, right? But if it has any bearing, then you should either connect it to a low or a high, whichever will make it irrelevant, but still, where a high may not become a problem, because you cannot guarantee that this will be always decided as a high, right? So in this case, when you, when you want to uh, not use a pin, just make sure it's connected to one or the other, high or low, that will show that, that it has no bearing on the output. Because if it, is a high, if it is floating, you can't guarantee what the output status would be. So if it has no influence, that's fine. But if it does, then you have to be careful. And so in this case, uh, I just uh, remind you that uh, uh, the, the way I selected the fourth chip, as I said, is because it has the same layout as the other three, meaning that pin one and two are the inputs and pin three is the output, which is not the same as you see here, for example, for uh, the NOR gate, right? You see here that the pin two and three are the inputs and pin one is the output. So to make sure that you follow in the same uh, layout as the other three chips, I selected the, the NAND gate. But before I uh, finish this clip, I have to show you how to use a, another instrument called a logic probe, right? And the reason we need this probe is because 
in the breadboard, I can have these resistor LEDs to, to, to tell me about the status of the output. But on a PC board, right, when the, the device is already soldered onto a PC board and connected to each other, you're not going to be able to just go and put your resistor and LED anywhere, right? So in that case, for example, I have no LED. And so what the logic probe is, is, is uh, or how it operates, is that first of all, uh, you see here, I had to connect the two, two cables to power and ground, right? To power and ground. So this device needs to be powered up. And that's why the, the, the terminals of the, this logic probe had to be connected to 5 volts and, and 0 volts. Then, as you see here, if I am checking, for example, uh -huh. you see here that when I connect it to ground, a low will show. In this case, it's a green light. Right, but that's a low voltage, right? And and it says low. And if I connect it to power, the red LED will turn on, and it's also labeled as high, right? Which means a one. So in this case, if I check, if I put the uh, uh, this, and here you see that it says that the output is low. Of course, that's that's when the inputs are are equal for the exclusive OR, and that is true, right? And if they are different it should be a high and in this case as you see the high will turn on well here I put the pulse so that it also gives me a sound uh, that says it's a high right however What's important here is that this logic probe allows me to check the status of the output or status of any pin for that matter without having to involve uh, an LED and a resistor. So uh, as far as your lab report is concerned, there is no template because it's very simplistic. But then again, don't, don't submit something that is too simplistic. Show me that what you got from this lab, what you understood, what you observed as, as a future engineer, right? As an engineering training. So make it, make it professional, however simplistic it is. Good luck.